Hey, welcome to Brave Church. My name is Samuel Laws, and I have the honor of serving as lead pastor around here. And I'm always excited to start a new talk series, but this one in particular, I'm excited about because as I was praying and preparing for weeks now, I really felt like God is gonna use this series in a big way to shake things up in our lives, okay? It's time to turn the page. Maybe you're like, my life is good. Turning the page seems kind of crazy because I like where things are at, okay? Hey, it's true. You never know what the future holds. But as much as consistency and comfort and knowing what's next can feel good, that's really not how life unfolds, which is one of the reasons that Jesus challenged us over and over again to live by faith. The thing about turn the page moments is they happen whether we like it or not. We can't stop a new year from coming. We can't fight getting older. We can't hold back the currents of change. This life is full of new days and new pages. So even if you're having a hard time with the page turning, this series is still for you. Now, now others of you, you're like, bring it on. I'm ready for a new change. It's time to mix them, some things up in my life. You know, maybe you feel stagnant spiritually or, or stuck relationally or you're just tired of the same job, the same routine, same, 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 okay? It's time to turn the page. I love this quote. Someone once said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Um, I think if we're honest, there are areas in all of our lives that are ready for a page to be turned. And as the page turns, it's gonna be more than a plot twist more than a new character or a new scene. As I was praying for you in our church, the word that God gave me for this year was breakthrough. I feel it in my bones. This is gonna be a breakthrough year. Breakthrough is coming. Hey, if you're watching with someone, turn to them and just say, breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. For our lives, for our church, for our families, Brave Church, it's 2022. And breakthrough is coming. That's the title of today's talk. If you're taking notes, you can write down breakthrough is coming. And we're back in the book of Acts. You know, we started going through Acts this last fall and then we took a short break. And now we're gonna be picking things back up in chapter eight. So, hey, if you didn't get one of these uh, resource booklets for the series, if you're watching with us on campus, uh, raise your hand, our ushers will get one of those to you. Also, if you're joining us online, but you're local, hey, stop by, we'd love to give you one of these. This is a great way that you can follow along, take notes. There's also a lot of information about next steps and how you can get more connected uh, through our church. But I love the book of Acts because I love origin stories. I love hearing how things got started, right? From the very beginning. And so the book of Acts chronicles the story of how the church got started. If you think about it, this is actually the story of the most successful movement in history. So whether you're a Christian or not, there's something that you can learn from this story because you can't deny the results. For better or worse, we're fascinated by success. You know, there's something that we respect about the exceptional. We're fascinated by Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and the story being written right now behind their success. Or, or people like Venus and Serena Williams, the unlikely story of two of the greatest tennis players to ever play the game. You know, we're, we're fascinated by figures like Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. Even controversial characters that happen to be insanely talented like Kanye West. You know, in many ways, the early church is like one of these success stories, except the church is a movement that points to one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Think about this, the impact of Jesus outlived his time on earth in a way that no other historical figure even came close. The ministry of Jesus was an eternal breakthrough. If you have a Bible with you, you can go to Acts chapter eight, verses five through 25, and while you're going there, let me ask you something. I wonder if you can identify a time in your life where you experienced real breakthrough. What did it look like? What defined it? How did you know that it was a big deal? What makes this breakthrough stand out as you look back at your life? Uh, when I look back, it's, it's not always easy because the truth is a lot of breakthroughs can take time to really see them for what they are. 
Some of them even happen in quiet, humble, or somewhat lonely moments. One of the biggest breakthroughs in my life came all through grace. By God's grace, I had the ability to come to my senses and make a commitment to marriage. <laughs> I had left the bay for the summer and then moved back and, and proposed for not the first, but the second time, and that's another story, okay? But the point is that one commitment led to starting our family, and that one decision set in motion the fulfillment of so many of our dreams. More than I ever imagined, I don't think that I would be here with the honor of serving this church if it wasn't for this one commitment that I made to Mary Marcy. See, see I was drifting, and that commitment served as a catalyst to breakthrough. There were things that I couldn't see about my life or, or where God was taking me until I was ready to turn the page. And that's the thing about breakthroughs, right? They're usually not because we're so smart. They aren't always within our control. Sometimes they even happen through our mistakes. The mark of a true breakthrough is when something happens in the present that has a lasting effect. When a decision or an event changes the trajectory of our lives. The dictionary defines breakthrough as a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. What if your life is about to suddenly have a dramatic, important discovery or development? Listen, breakthrough is coming. So in order to understand what this could mean for our lives today, we're gonna look at a passage that shows us how God creates breakthroughs, how God creates breakthroughs. I want to think of, I want you to think, excuse me, of these points as core principles for how God moves us forward, how God literally turns the pages of our lives. And maybe you're here today and, and you need a breakthrough. Listen, I believe that God wants to give you one. Fortunately, this passage gives us insight into exactly how God gives us what we need the most. Are you guys ready? Let's begin reading, starting in verse five. It says, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and they saw the signs that he was performing, they paid close attention. They paid close attention to what he said. For, for, the, for with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. What do we notice here? Well, first, Philip preached Jesus the Messiah, Jesus, Savior to all. But then it says from there that there were signs from God. And because of these signs, people didn't just walk by Philip. It says they paid close attention to him. And as they paid attention, something happened that led to great joy. So what happened? You know, yes, these people were healed, demons were being cast out, but that wasn't the deepest source of their joy. It wasn't that they were healed. They heard the message of Jesus and they were saved. See, we learn later that many people decided to follow Jesus and were baptized. Uh, some churches are marked by joy. Uh, people just, they just feel it when they walk in. I remember one time, uh, a pastor friend came and visited us here at Brave and, and he was telling me that he just felt so much joy at our gatherings. You know, we were, we were talking about it and, you know, at first he thought, well, maybe it's the, the kind of songs that you sing. And then he said, well, maybe it's the tone of the teaching. And then he started to really, you know, describe how friendly the greeters were. And he went on and on just trying to analyze and trying to think, why did I experience so much joy when I visited this church? But you know what the true source of joy around here is? It's people finding Jesus. Churches where people are finding Jesus are marked by joy. It's contagious. It permeates the atmosphere. It's everywhere you look. There is joy because people's lives are being changed. I love what we're a part of. Let's continue in verse six. It talks about miraculous signs, okay? This this could be translated to mean an event that has special meaning. Uh, these special events got people's attention. But the attention was a means to an end. The first thing that we need to know about breakthrough is this. Number one, breakthrough often begins with God getting your attention. I wonder when was the last time God got your full attention? 
Some people call these God moments or divine encounters, or maybe it's, it's a moment where you go, this is something else. I don't know what it is, but that doesn't just happen. When God wants to do something new in your life, like, like lead you in a new direction, open a new door, take you to a new place of wholeness or free you from something, the first thing that he often does is, is something that gets your attention. And so God, he knows exactly how to speak to each and every one of us. He knows what we'll notice. He knows what we'll pay attention to. You know, we see in this passage that God can use miracles, but that's not the only way that God gets our attention. He might use finances. He might use friends. He might use circumstances or situations that just don't go the way we expected. He uses disappointments. He uses frustration. He uses anger. He even uses loss. Is there something standing out in your life that God might be trying to use to say, hey, look over here. Look at me. I'm trying to get your attention. See, this is one of the ways that we can identify when God wants to do something new in our lives. I had a situation recently where I just kept trying to make something work. I really wanted it to. I was trying to figure it out, but I also felt this, this hesitancy. Have you ever been there where, where you just wanted something to work so bad, but it just wasn't? Like, like dating someone, but you just knew they weren't the right fit? Or, or a job or an uncomfortable pair of shoes, right? Like all kinds of things that we just try to make happen because maybe we feel, you know, invested in it to a point. Well, I had this, in my situation, I had a lack of peace and it just didn't fully make sense. And there were all these reasons I just wanted it to work, but it wasn't. And in the end, it was because I believe God had a better plan in mind. The original plan wasn't bad. It just wasn't the right timing. It just wasn't making sense. And so sometimes it takes a sense of resistance to get our attention. When we get to that point where we just go, God, is there something else that you wanna do here? Boom, that's where we see a different path. So when something happens in your life and God's trying to get your attention, what if resistance is the revelation? Like, like forcing a piece of a puzzle into the wrong place until you finally stop and trying to make it happen and you just go, oh, it fits over here. Don't skip past these, these moments. Don't skip past these feelings. Do not ignore them because they could be the start of a breakthrough. Lean in and ask God to show you. Pause and ask the Holy Spirit, why isn't this working? God, what are you doing? What are you trying to show me? Or what do you wanna do in my heart through this? What are you up to? Because I don't wanna miss it. Let's continue reading verse nine. It says, now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for so long with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles that he saw. Now, we're going to look more at Simon's story in a bit. But first, let's take a look at what this revival led to. Verse 14, it says, When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. And when they arrived, they prayed for the new believers and there they, they, they prayed that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Uh, Peter and John were apostles, right? And they were sent from Jerusalem to check out what was happening. They heard the reports, the stories of lives being changed, and these stories were reaching Jerusalem where they were based. And so they had to go and see. But they also went to verify, is this thing legit? Is this really God? Is this really an extension of this movement that we've just started called the church? And what you have to understand is up until this point, it was mostly just about their ministry. It was mostly the apostles doing stuff firsthand, so here we see a shift taking place, a shift 
from the first generation of the church to the next. Almost like a a passing of the baton. They came to see what Philip was up to, but also to give their blessing, to give give it their stamp of approval. But then maybe even surprisingly, they do something even more than just inspect and bless. They actually got into the trenches. They laid hands to impart the Holy Spirit. They gave this movement the power of God. When they lay hands, the Holy Spirit falls. Number two, breakthrough is propelled by the people that God brings into your life. It's propelled by people that God brings into your life. Notice the breakthrough had already started. But when Peter and John prayed and they laid hands, everything went to another level. The breakthrough was propelled. Have you ever had a person come into your life at just the right time? Someone that taught you things that you really needed to know at just the right moment. Maybe they had helped you avoid some really big mistakes or they gave you the wisdom that you couldn't have succeeded without. Over, over Christmas break, I read uh, this leadership memoir, The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger. And, you know, I just couldn't put it down. It was, it was fascinating to read, such a good book. But, but there's this story from Iger's earlier years when he was made head of entertainment for ABC. Now, this was a big jump for him. He had just been very quickly promoted. He started as an intern at ABC Studios, working late nights, super early morning, setting up lights for film sets, just doing all the grunt work. And then he worked himself all the way up to this opportunity. And this opportunity literally positioned him with a shot at one day becoming CEO of ABC. But here's the problem. It was a way bigger role than he could ever have succeeded at on his own. Nothing about his background seemed to point to him being the right guy for this. For starters, He was from New York. He didn't know Hollywood culture. He had no connections there. Being head of entertainment meant that he would be the one having to decide and green light, investing tons of money in new TV shows and and new projects. And he'd never even read a film or TV script in his life. But his two bosses who ran the company, they had faith in him. They believed in him. And so here's what Bob did. He took them to dinner after they gave him the job. And he just said, I need your help. And Bob writes this, he said, they knew the business and I didn't, but our fates were now intertwined. And I hoped that they would be willing to be patient with me as I learned on the job. With their help, he had wild success and the rest is history. I mean, he eventually became the CEO of Disney, right? But getting the job was only one breakthrough. It was the people that that were brought into his life that propelled him forward. Is there someone that God has brought into your life to propel you forward, to propel the breakthrough that's already been started? It could be a boss, it could be a spouse, it could be a friend, a mentor, it could be a leader or a pastor. Listen, God uses people that are your age, God uses people that are older than you, and God even uses people who are younger than you. One of the things I love about this story is that it's such a beautiful example of the older generation and the younger generation working together. You know, the kind of church that Jesus came to start isn't just for young people. And it's not just for old people. It's multicultural and it's multi-generational, just like our church. See, sometimes it takes the older generation coming in like Peter and John to verify, to bless, and to lay hands for things to go to the next level. Often there are two things, though, that keep this from happening in our lives. You know, the younger generation, their their challenge is is this attitude, this idea that if I accept their help, it means that I can't do it on my own. And you got to push aside this desire to prove yourself so that you can receive the help and the blessing that comes when people are there to propel you, okay? The older generation, now their problem is, is they go, well, they're not ready yet, And if I let go too soon, then what's my place going to be? And that's a faith journey in and of itself. But what you need to know is that God's plan A for breakthrough is multi-generational. It's the younger and the older supporting each other. So who has God brought into your life to propel your breakthrough? Who's laying hands and praying for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh and empower you? 
Who's in your corner? Who's celebrating what God is doing? Who's giving you great and timely wisdom? Value these people, recognize these people, invite them into your life. One of the ways we do this here at Brave is through Brave Groups. Uh, Brave Groups are starting in February, but right now we have group leader training. Maybe you're someone that goes, hey, I wanna be that kind of person for others, or I wanna help facilitate that connection and build community. You know, we're not a crowd, we're a community. And so starting next Sunday, we have a group leader training, but all you have to do, if you're interested in learning more, is just go to brave.church. Everything's on our website. So continuing on, verse 18, it says, when Simon saw that the spirit was given and the laying on, through the laying on of hands by the apostles, he offered them money and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, he says, may your money perish with you because you thought that you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. And Simon answered, he's like, well, Pray to the Lord for me so that nothing that you have said may happen to me. And after they had further proclaimed the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Simon misunderstood the purpose behind God's power. He thought it was a tool to be used to bring himself glory. He wanted to impress people. He tried to buy this ability Simon needed a breakthrough in his heart before he could ever be used to help others. Number three, if you're taking notes, write this down. Breakthrough works in you before it works through you. It works in you before it works through you. I did an interview with my friend Michael once for a podcast, and he was here with us at Brave. And as I was studying this week, I was reminded of this incredible story that he told me. Um, he shared this amazing story of a time that God got his attention and did something really special. And so I wanna show this to you, but notice it was just as much about this work that God was doing in Michael as it was about what God did through Michael. Check this out. Some of my biggest God moments, actually all of my biggest God <laughs> moments, none of them have happened in the church. Wow. They've all happened while I'm out. Um, some of my favorite stories I have is uh, I was in Brazil and at the time I was on tour with Austin Mahone and he was really big at the moment. He had just won a VMA for the artist to watch. Mm. And we were traveling all over the world and I went to Brazil and we had a show. And while I was there, after we got done, I asked them to extend my flight a little bit so that I can enjoy Brazil more and be with my friends there. Mm. While I was there, they were in a place where I mean, prostitution is legal. Wow. So just imagine that hovering over the city. And there was this crazy drought. It was a really huge drought. Mm. And it hadn't rained in so long that the government was turning off people's water for days at a time. And I'm here trying to have a vacation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get me the real sight. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in this, and I'm in this place and I'm and I feel this pull on my mm. heart. And it's cool because at this moment in my career, I had done some cool things, but I hadn't done some of the large things that followed. Mm. And I was teaching a dance class while I was there. Mm. And entertainment news came, E! News. And it was one of my moments to talk about Michael in Brazil. Mm. And in that moment, I had to surrender the platform to pray for the rain. So I had to say, like, even though it was my chance to kind of get a little bit more notice, I have to give God the moment. Hmm. It's unexpected hmm. and not what I really want to do because I did need a little bit more clout. But God, I'm willing to give this to you. So I prayed for the rain on their national television. <laughs> and then as I flew home days later, I said, God, I'm asking for it to rain when I land. So I know that you did it, mm. but my prayer activated it. Wow. What's cool about this story is that it rained as soon as I land. As soon as I turned my phone on, my friend sent me some footage saying that, Michael, it's starting to rain. 
And this is why you stay surrendered to God and not your own might. Wow. Because I could have gloried in that. It rained a little bit. <laughs> I said, that's not the fullness of what God did. That was just enough for me to have faith. Hmm. Now we have to really believe. So later on that week, I'm now in Puerto Rico. Huh. I'm with Austin again, telling him the story about this little bit of rain. And I'm so full of faith and I'm so excited by the little bit God has already done. And while I am telling him this story, and for whatever reason, I had my phone on me, even though I'm about to go on stage, my phone just starts ringing and it's going off. And it's my friends in Brazil sending me live footage of it looked like buckets of water <laughs> being thrown out. Wow. And in that moment, we all tripped out. There was tons of non-believers hearing the story and seeing proof of my story. And then we were so uh, excited about God, even the people who didn't believe in God, that the show started and we weren't on stage. So we're running <laughs> on stage to try to get to our position. That's awesome. And what's powerful about that story is not that I was a part of praying for the rain. What's powerful about the story is that I had to believe God when there was no sign. Mm. I had to be willing to uh, sur surrender my moment of shine. Yep. And then I still had to share the story that is influence because i didn't share the story in that moment knowing that god is going to release the rain in the video at that time i shared the story because it was a beautiful story mm. and i felt like that held more precedence than talking about whatever the latest hot topic was mm. and god moves through those unexpected moments when we are simply available yeah. when we are simply willing mm -hmm. not when we're always prepared Right. Not when we want to do it, but just because we said yes. Isn't that an incredible story? I'm so encouraged. Like I'm encouraged to just start praying for bigger things, right? Just start asking God for bigger breakthroughs than the kind of stuff that I've been thinking about. But you know, here's the deal. It's natural when you start to see the power of God working through other people's lives to think, what could happen through my life? But God, he's not just trying to get stuff done. He has a lot of ways of getting things done. He can accomplish his purposes through you, through me. He can use someone else. God's first priority isn't getting stuff done through you. It's what's inside you. It's your heart. It's developing your trust in him, your faith, your humility, your surrender, your patience, your obedience, your reliance on him. See, it all starts right here saying God do a work in me. Do a work in my heart. There's something else that, you know, we don't want to miss here, right? Peter, he rebukes Simon pretty harshly. I mean, I mean, he says, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy this gift. You thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. In other words, you're so off base, Simon. You will never get to do what we're doing, not with that kind of heart. Now, at first, when I read this, my first thought was, isn't that a little much, Peter? <laughs> right? Like, it seems a little excessive. Like, Peter, you're taking this a little too far. Except look at the result. Simon got it. He repented immediately. It's like Peter, he knew exactly the way Simon needed to be corrected. Now, I'm not saying it's good to go around blowing people out of the water or yelling at them or, or being, being you know, over the top all the time. But at the same time, some moments and some situations call for a direct confrontation with the truth. Sometimes we all need to hear stuff that we don't want to hear. And it's not always gonna be said exactly the way that we like to hear it. Maybe you can think of a time that someone shared something strong with you, strong truth, that it wasn't easy to hear, but it was exactly what you needed to get your attention. Maybe you had a big fight with someone or a blow up in a relationship, and that was the thing that got you to the point where you realized that you needed a counselor or you needed some help getting through something. Maybe you had a friend that was just a little too honest about your health issues, but at the same time, you know that they love you and what they, what they were saying was really what you needed to hear to make some changes. Or maybe you got called a, a jerk and it rocked you a bit. Like, man, why? I can't believe they think of me that way. But then it's got you thinking about how you're coming across or, or why you're saying the things that you're saying. 
These, these are just some examples of why sometimes God will use bold and direct moments to get our attention. Some of you, you've got a soft heart towards the Lord and maybe it's easy for him to get your attention. Maybe he gets your attention during worship or a devotion time and you're just so good at pivoting and changing directions and following through so quickly. But if you're like me, some of us, you know, we can be a little stubborn. And at times it takes a little more than a gentle nudge. Simon wanted God's power to flow through his hands, but he went about it in the wrong way with the wrong motive. I wonder who else was listening. Think about this. I wonder who else was listening when Simon asked. I wonder if this was also a teachable moment for everyone else that was in the crowd. See, we don't know for sure who else was there, but what we do know for sure is it was intense. And Peter made it clear, the power of God is not for sale. It's not an NFT. You can't get it with Bitcoin. You can't trade stocks for it. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can only receive it through grace. Maybe you're here today and you still need the greatest breakthrough of all, coming to faith in Jesus Christ. If you bow your heads and close your eyes, I wanna pray for everyone here, everyone watching that's ready to receive the breakthrough of salvation. God, I pray for everyone um, listening right now, Lord, if they're at the place where they're ready to cross that line of faith and, and put their trust in you and start to experience your power at work in their lives, your power to save us, but also your power for life, your power for the life that we were always intended to live, for the purposes and the dreams that you have placed in our hearts. And God, I just pray for each person right now. We know that heaven is filled with joy when just one person decides to follow you. So God, we just thank you right now as those uh, who are listening that are committing their life to you. We wanna come alongside you. If, if that's a decision that you're making right now, we just want you to know it doesn't stop here. Get, check, get plugged into a brave group. Respond online, let a pastor or let a leader, or let someone know the decision that you've made. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you're with us and you're already a follower of Jesus, but you're like, hey, I'm ready for a breakthrough. I need a spiritual breakthrough. Listen, your best year is the year that you grow the most spiritually. And so if your prayer is God, start the breakthrough inside of me, then you're gonna wanna join us for these next 21 days starting tomorrow. We're gonna do 21 days of prayer and fasting. And if you're joining us through the online community and you wanna be a part of that, you can go online. There's lots of information on how you can come and step with us. But also if you're local, come on campus tonight in Dublin because we're gonna have a seek night and we're gonna kick it off with a teaching on fasting. Hey, Brave Church, it's gonna be a great year. Love you, excited for the ways God's gonna turn the page in your lives, in my lives, in the life of our church. Let's do this. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us and listening to today's talk. We hope that this message has impacted your life. Well, if you want more information about who we are or ways to get connected, you can visit us online at brave.church. There you can find information about our on-campus gatherings, plus upcoming events and ways to give to support what God is doing through this church. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.